Well, hello there, my name is HW. If you spend any amount of time on YouTube, on guitar forums, you've probably heard of NAM, Neural Amp Modeler. It is the very accurate, open source, and very, very free guitar amp capture solution. It is a technology um, that has basically been unleashed on the world and in almost no time at all. NAM has gone from dozens and a couple hundreds of users to just in about six months time, uh, what appears to be tens of thousands of users all over the internet um, and all over the world. It is a vibrant and fast growing community. It's really a very interesting thing. I think NAM is gonna be around for a long time. I think open source solutions like this are very interesting. And that is why I was uh, very fortunate to catch up with the creator of NAM, Steve Atkinson, uh, the man who gave us the technology and sort of unleashed it to the, to the world via his, um, his open source ethos. And um, I had a chance to catch up with him at NAM, and uh, invited him over, and uh, we had this little conversation right before we got tacos. And one of the things that is interesting to me is that you're changing the tool that a guitarist is using to do their job, and it's a fundamentally creative job, and it's difficult to put your finger on what gets creative creativity to happen what gets the juices flowing yeah and so yeah you can say i need a touch screen menu because that that's what makes sense with a digital solution but i don't know i kind of like the idea of keeping knobs on it because if that's the sort of motions that you go through as a guitarist right and that's what gets you in the yeah. zone gets you doing what you do as an artist then keep it there yeah. Keep it there, like, like have a, have a paintbrush made out of whatever whatever it's made whatever it needs to be made out of. Use your you know use oils that you know could be manufactured in a different way, or just do them in you know some more traditional way. Mm -hmm. It's just it's a statement about tradition, I guess. Is that those sorts of patterns that you're used to, those get you in a place where you're comfortable and it lets you focus on what you want to do. So, yeah. you know, regardless of whether it's a Kemper or a tube amp or some like plugin that's running on a computer, yeah, it's got to be something that is helping the artist do what they're there to do. Because if they don't, if they can't use it and express their vision as an artist, then it doesn't matter. That's kind of why you created, I mean, this thing. Like how did how did your what was your earliest intention of building Yeah. NAM? Yeah. So it's interesting because my earliest intentions were uh over three years ago at this point. Um I had uh gotten a little bit of experience uh with ML and machine learning. Yes. Yeah. With machine learning. Uh and I was interested as a guitarist to kind of apply it to this, uh, you know, this thing that I do day in and day out is plugging into an amp and it changes the way that my guitar sounds into something that I really like. And uh, I just wanted to take that, put my machine learning hat on and say, can I do that? Can we learn how this happens? So that was, that was really what drove it, it was curiosity. I wanted to see how would things turn out if you just set it up and did what came naturally. Yeah. So because it was fun also, I intentionally closed the books. There, may, there might have been information that I could have looked at for other pe from other people uh, things that they had tried, but I was really doing this for fun and it's kind of like doing a crossword. You don't look at the answers. You want to figure it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I just made a promise to myself that I wouldn't check how anything else was being done. I wouldn't look for any hints whatsoever. I would just kind of follow the steps, say, okay, this is how I would set up the problem. Here's some tools that I'm familiar with. I'm going to apply them to this problem. And I sort of sincerely believe that there were probably a lot of other people at that same time that had that same toolkit that would have looked at that same problem and had the first same initial guess of how to do it. So 
that's how it started. I just took one, uh, one guess at it, saw how it turned out. Uh, the first time that I could actually hear the uh, results coming back was really cool because it didn't take too long before it really started sounding like the amp. And when this was getting started, you know, end of 2018, beginning of 2019, the way that I thought about digital gear was if you could get something that sounded close mm -hmm. to what you were going right, after, right. then that's something pretty cool and something yeah. that I could be proud of. Yeah. Close so, enough is good enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's how, it, that's how it started. Yeah. Um, we just, uh, or I just, um, you know, just it started as a hobby project out of curiosity, and um, things went from there. So about a year ago, you pick it back up and decide to turn this passion hobby project into something people can download, put a UI on it, put a skin on it. What what brought you back to it to do that? It was really just getting into guitar in general more again. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a couple years after I had initially uh, worked on this where life got in the way. And, you know, there were other things that I was working on, things that I was uh, doing in my spare time. And it wasn't just Nam. Uh, it was also um, playing guitar that I just wasn't doing as often. Mm -hmm. So this was kind of me coming back to music saying, hey, I want to spend more time playing guitar. And by the way, this project that uh, that seemed to be kind of cool, let's pick that back up again. So, you know, I started writing a little bit more code again, started making a few more videos, and all the while things are getting a little bit smoother, a little bit more polished step yeah. by step. And people started to notice. It just took, you know, the right few people to notice it early on. Mm -hmm say some really encouraging things. There were some really encouraging comments early on that were really kind of cool to hear. I didn't expect that yeah. this was going to be special or that it was going to be something that more than like a few friends said like, hey, good job, Steve. Yeah. Okay, and that's it. <laughs> so you create a Facebook group, you put it up, people can download it, and that's November, 2022. Mm -hmm. And fast forward today, we're sitting here, middle of April, 2023. So not, not quite six months later, I guess. Um, it's, we've, you've seen that Facebook group go from zero to, you know, in the last two months. How, yeah. I mean, I got it. I, I kind of discovered it just two months ago, mm -hmm. a couple hundred people and it's what, 7,000? Yep. As of today or yesterday, we're at seven and a half thousand. Yeah. And most of that has happened since uh, the end of February. Yeah. So this is basically 300 people to where we are today in the course of, yeah. is that about a month and a half? Yeah. Yeah, it's grown big time. And it's like, uh, it doesn't seem to be slowing down. You did something, though, that's very unique, right, from everything else. You kind of decided, I guess because of the Passion Project, we'll make it open source. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> <sighs> the reason why is because when I started working on this, like I said, I said that I would just take one step. Mm -hmm. I would do what made sense to me. And I didn't think that I was doing anything that to someone familiar with machine learning tools would be surprising. Mm -hmm. So I expected that this would be something kind of like a blog post where people who are curious about this might learn about it. Uh, folks who are familiar with machine learning would look at it and they say, yeah, that makes complete sense mm -hmm. and go on with their day. And so it made a lot of sense that this would look like something where accessibility and kind of teaching would make a lot of sense. Um, it turned out to work really well. And that's really cool, but it also doesn't change fundamentally that I felt that what I was doing was something that um, 
was making use of machine learning tools that I think a lot of the people who developed them at that time, you know, in the mid 2010s, late 2010s, mm -hmm. were also in a mindset of we're laying the groundwork here and we want to see where this can be taken once the technology is in place. Yeah. Because the technology is not the only thing that has to come together for this to be something that's valuable, something that's useful to people. Yeah. Technology is not a product. Yeah. Okay, so interesting. It, 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 you don't think of this as a product. It seems like you haven't ever. The way you're speaking is, about it now. I think that is true. Whenever people say uh, or talk about it and speak about it as a product, I don't usually use the same word uh, when I respond to them. I don't usually yeah. follow on with it because there's a lot more that you have to do than to write a little bit of code that gets a machine learning model to mm -hmm. learn on some data. It's another step, yes, to write a plugin, be able to get that model over there and have it run in real time. And it's really cool that to have those things available, but people ask for a lot more and the standard is a lot higher than that right now. Just think of any number of plugins that you've gotten from a reputable company and think about all of the features that come in it. Mm -hmm. It's not just about feature count, it's about coming up with something that helps support creativity again. There's, there's solutions. Yeah, it's right? a there's solution. Yeah. It needs to all come together. You need to look at it and say, yes, I want to play guitar. I'm mm -hmm. going to make music yeah. with this. Tonex, Quad Cortex, those are those are uh, you know platform solutions that I most commonly hear people you know compare Neural Ant model or two. Mm -hmm. And like you said, those like you said, those have a lot of um, there's a lot of there's a whole feature set built out that make them you know whole solutions. And you have uh, I mean this group of people, this sort of I'll I'll characterize them as an overzealous group of <laughs> well-intentioned, right? Like, they're very excited. They are very excited. They're very excited. They're very excited. And, and um, they've discovered this new, free, accurate, you know, uh, capture thing. And it seems there's really a spirit of like, everyone lend a hand, you know, mm -hmm. um, from developers all the way to you know even kind of support solutions like yeah tone hunt just kind of launched which is right kind of a big deal and only six months later it's um the community figuring out a solution to a problem mm -hmm. which was okay we have this thing now where do we get models you know oh they're in the facebook group they're in a google drive they're all they're just scattered around yeah and so even and so there's several solutions um, that there's a, there's like three websites out there to do it, but um, most recently this one Tone Hunt has that that sort of seems like okay this solves the problem of where are we all going to put our stuff and it's attractive it looks well done you can create an account and you know see how many people are downloading your your stuff what's your what's your reaction when you see people really getting I mean because people put hours and hours into into that, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, enough to plan a launch. It looks great, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's a really cool privilege to get to see all of this happen. The reason why is because you have all of these people that are contributing mm -hmm. their enthusiasm for this. Thing, and they're they have they have all this enthusiasm, and they want to help it along, and it's really heartening to see that. Yeah, there's a lot of people who have a lot of different ideas, mm -hmm. and I also think that that's something that's really cool because being an open source project and one that is operating with a lot of visibility into its inner workings. Sure. The deliberation about where this goes, what comes into it, what gets put on the back burner, mm -hmm. is all being hashed out 
right in front of everyone. Yeah. And that's been really cool for me because I've never gotten to see a product in the music industry yeah. get developed like this. I'm getting to see it yeah. at the scale of thousands of people providing their input. I'm getting to hear what are the pain points that come up again and again and again. What are ones that people mention offhand or some you know, offhand ideas? And there's a lot of chaos to it. It's extremely chaotic, but it's... <laughs> there's a lot of chaos to it, but it's also very cool to see it happen because yeah. we're at this early stage where there's this technology that enables people to think about this problem and enables them to think about what do they want to see come next. And Tone Hunt is an example of that, right? Having a script that trains a model and a plugin that runs it, that could be something that just exists for one person yeah. and multiply that out, everyone individually doing this. That is an experience, but it's natural, especially now, to ask what comes next after that. There's a communal experience that people want to have. They want to yeah. share these models. They want to experience these tones with each other. They want to talk about them. Talking about, you know, what's your favorite tone? Um, it's just something that, that people mm -hmm. can relate about. And it's something that's not obvious if you're looking at it from a literal technology standpoint. So getting to see that and all of these other ideas get thrown out there, um, it's really cool because all these ideas are out there and it's a great starting point for someone to pick and choose good ideas there, bring focus and move it forward. Do you think that is the biggest sort of draw of the thing? Obviously it's, it's free, right? But, but just making something free doesn't mean people are going to download it. And, sure. and we talked about how, you know, Tonex and Quad Chords have these other feature sets that make it a full solution. But, but And yet there's been this huge interest in it. Do you think it's the community that makes it the most attractive or makes it attractive? Is that what's driving the... I will say that the adoption would not have been as rapid if the community did not convey that enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. Why would you go and download this thing that looks like that? Yeah. <laughs> right, right. It's simple. It's simple. If, a, <laughs> if, if, yeah. if someone didn't have something good, something good to say about it. And so, yeah, it's, it, I definitely think that there are community dynamics that, um, that are owed a lot of credit for how, how, it ha for the direction that things have gone, having that input mm -hmm. is very valuable to get kind of a bigger picture of what matters to people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, there's just something about doing this and doing it as part of a community that is much more engaging, much more f fulfilling for us as social people mm -hmm. than just doing it in your bedroom and feeling like, you know, I'm doing this for myself and then I'm going to put it away. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go to work. And it just kind of lives back there. Right. There's people to talk to about yeah. this. So you have, you make this thing. A bunch of people love it. Community comes behind it, starts making stuff. But you've approached this with, you know, no revenue motive you have no maybe no goal of users monthly active users on the platform right what does success look like now that you've open sourced this thing it's out there it's open what is like what does it mean for like neural ant modeler to be a success now that's a good question it would be really easy for me to say at this point that it has been a success beyond what I could have ever imagined. And that is 100% true. But there are ideas and indications that this has for what the future could look like for mm -hmm. guitarists and 
the gear that they have to help them express their creativity as artists. So I don't know if I have the answer in terms of what the perfect product might sure. look like. Mm -hmm. I'm not a product person. I am an engineer and a scientist solving technical problems. But with this being open source and open source in a way that I hope companies find very agreeable, I hope that the indication here is that the technology is there, there is a flurry of ideas out there. Now it's time for folks with a product vision to take those pieces, glean out from the enthusiasm and feedback, something that speaks to them, someone with you know, good wisdom about what makes a good product, mm. take that, impose order on it, I don't know what that's going to look like, but I see the tools as being laid out there. And so what success looks like to me is success for companies. Uh, success for uh, companies finding that they can successfully take this technology mm -hmm. and use it to make something that is a greater experience than just the core technology itself. Yeah. You, you uh, sort of, you hope that people, it sounds like you hope people find a use, commercialization, mm -hmm. uh, free to use, all of it. Yeah. If it's solving solutions, then it's, or if it's a solution that's solving problems. Yes. It's. Yeah, this is a technology that I hope will equip people who have a mind to use it to achieve what they might not have otherwise. And that can happen in the free sphere, as we've seen with the continued uh, open source plugin, trainer, tone hub. There's a place for that. There's also a place for, uh, for companies to take this and um, put, their effort, put their effort behind it yeah. and uh, bring something with a lot of polish. Steve, thanks for sitting down with me. Yeah, my pleasure. Should we get tacos now? Absolutely. All right, let's, let's go. do it. <laughs> hey,